a very good morning team this is amir mustafa in this video we will understand how we can dockerize our application which has different types of data so till now we have seen lots of concepts basically the core concepts let us overview them quickly so we have understood what is docker and why how we can install it in our application how we can dockerize our app some of the concepts what are attached mode detached mode we have done it in detail we have also created interactive mode in python how we can delete a image container inspect the image creating tagging of the images and uh, once we have dockerized the application we have pushed in docker hub and at the same time we have pulled from the docker hub to fetch data from the docker if you are new in this channel you need not worry we will every concept which we will discuss uh, i'll repeat it again i'll try my best to repeat it again and let's understand together so till now what we have done uh, firstly uh, let me tell about docker in short so if you have a application normally when we are coding in python java javascript other language laravel so what we do we uh, uh, these are heavily dependent on packages so normally we install composer install pip install npm install so we done local machine but what if suppose your system crashes and you you have been given a new system again you need to install those or suppose there are team multiple huge team in your in, in a project then again all those people need to install it separately this this was the first issue challenge which we were facing the second challenge which we were facing is even if they have installed it how will they know which version they need to lock it we have package.log file in npm but still if uh, one can install node 17 other can install node 12 node 14 so most of the functionality and features come with a version or deprecate with a version so this feature helped us with docker so need not worry if if we uh, till now you haven't dockerized an application we will be dockerizing in this video it will be a short video but we'll learn it the best possible way but what different uh, is this video this video will share is whatever we have done in the previous videos dockerize the application they were using one specific type of data okay before going to that let's understand quickly what is a image what is a container so when we have a app taking the snapshot of the code suppose you have a code in the local base let me open my code base this is the application node js javascript and uh, we will be doing in real time now in this video in some minutes but first uh, what we understand we have a code which has some files now we will creating the image means docker is taking the snapshot of this repository and keeping its in its somewhere path now the work of this application is done now everything will be done from docker itself creating a container means uh, you can think that you are utilizing that image but adding more features to it images are read only containers are read plus write so what we have done now taking the snapshot of this docker of this code base this is one specific type of data and uh, uh, the entire previous episodes which we have seen is based on taking the snapshot of the code base server js package json all these files but every application might have or uh, most application might have multiple type of data so what are these type of data these are permanent data there are temporary data and there are application data so all those which we have seen now is a part of app data
okay so what is application data is code plus environment whatever code we have written plus packages we have installed for example express.js node now second type of data is called temporary data suppose we are uploading a file or uploading an image then uh, there are chances we directly do not upload it in the main path we keep it somewhere in a temp file so temporary file is used for temporary purpose as suggested by name but it's okay if we lose the data so this is the second type of data we will be seeing and the third type of data is called permanent app data so what is this suppose the work of temporary is done and now we want to put the and the file is verified we want to place it somewhere say a database or in a folder that needs that needs to be persistent that cannot be cleared so this is the third type of data so this one we have already did temporary data and permanent data okay so analyzing a real time app so what we will do from this scratch we have one project it's a very simple uh, node application uh, let's go to the uh, if you are uh, some other guy technology some other work guy with some other technology person with developer with other technology like python java php it's fine the concept is not dedicated to the technology but uh, the feature it provides for example uh, copying a file to the temporary path copying a file to a permanent path taking a snapshot of the code so let us understand we'll give uh, we need not go in depth of the code but yes we will understand the main concept where we are using temp so when we go to server.js file here we have uh, these are we have a couple of routes exists create at present we need not focus on this i'll tell you when it is required for now what we'll do when we do the login i'll show the screenshot of the app so once we dockerize this app now we will uh, after dockerizing we will get this site so what it will do it will ask for your feedback and let's say it's a, it's a basic form so when we enter a title document text and click save button uh, data will be saved like this so if if there it will be saved two places one is in temp file one it is in final file path so if that uh, first when we uh, send the data the title will be saved as a name so logic is that if that file already exists in a path final path then it will ask user no you need to please try with some other feedback name for a specific user otherwise if it's a fresh feedback for that user then it will uh, send create a file so let us tokenize the app okay couple of pages i want to show you you want to see before uh, start dockerizing the app first page is server js second page is temp which is empty another page is public and this page contains some styling css we have a page it contains feedback.html some html in it and one exist page so when a feedback exists will route the user to this page and this one is feedback which is empty at present so when user submits the feedback data will come to these two places so let us dockerize the app now for dockerizing the app we need to create a file name docker file okay the our 
platform technology is javascript so we'll be using node js we'll be using node 17 the latest version and uh, i'll explain how this can be written from node 17 so this means when we go to a docker hub there there are some cool developers like uh, when we uh, use a pl plat node.js we install a we install some package a node and we write code on top of node so these images already been written in docker hub we are extending this node 17 and we'll writing our code base the first line is node 17 okay work directory app this can be anything this can this is a choice of the developer but we want to keep all the application file in app this means everything every path we'll choose now from here that will be inside app next will be copy what will copy okay so first thing we'll copy is copy package.json where to copy dot we can write over here app but as we have pointed the root file to the app if writing just dot is also enough that is a destination file so why are we copying this package.json file we want to install the packages uh, one thing we note here that uh, before for running this command normally if we do not dockerize we will run npm install because we have package.json file uh, we do not want to install over here we want to install in docker and every can everyone can use it from there so that's we are doing use node 17 keeping our base app and package first we are installing package.json now we will tell them please install this command run npm install okay dot dot so what we are doing now is that once we have installed this file we'll tell okay we'll tell docker okay now you can copy all the file other than package.json we have installed uh, if we haven't done these two files uh, and written npm install below it would have installed package.json but the problem with that was which we faced we have seen it in previous video was that whenever we are re-rendering it now every time npm install was running which was making our application little slow so we have installed the file and we then we have copied the other file the first dot indicates copy the file other than the previous one and second dot indicate the pointed direction that is app okay so when we write our code we are we point to a specific port for us it is 80 so we will write expose 80 and what is the last thing we will run command to run correct cmd this is how we write the code i mean syntax this is the way we write the syntax of the code when we write in terminal we write node server.js but in docker file we write like this this is equivalent to writing node server.js in terminal cool so we have prepared a docker file this is the first step we prepare a docker file the second step which we will do will follow along with this document it will be helpful so the second step is to create the image creating the image means docker will take a snapshot of this entire code base and keep somewhere in docker 
okay so let us now start it and also if uh, uh, this is the first time you are seeing uh, there is a extension called it's a, a very beautiful extension provided by microsoft it is called docker uh, it gives us detailed graphical view of the containers and images where user can see okay these are the images it's in my docker in my container and yeah graphically so earlier this was recently launched i think in 2021 end and before that this was not this extension was not there so there are ways we can see it is using uh, terminal we have also discussed this in detail in the previous previous some videos so but for this it will be for this video this graphical will be fine so let us now uh, execute create the snapshot do comment me if you get stuck somewhere so let us build together one thing we need to uh, keep in mind before starting any command you should type docker v this will if docker version is coming it means your docker is happy set up in our system and ready for the command to execute okay docker build t and now we give the name feedback node have already created so i'll give another name so we'll give another name feedback node let's say our application will be feedback node 17 17 is the version which we are using so what we are doing now is we will be creating we will be building this image we are creating the docker image and we got the error <laughs> docker build t okay and i missed one dot so normally when we write now docker build dot is enough but what it does it generates id so every time we need to check the id name and but uh, using this command what we did this one we we have given a name to our image so next time uh, whenever we want uh, when, uh, when we give a name we mostly remember it for longer time so we can directly write this name and uh, call this image feedback node 70 we can see that uh, our docker now contains this image and it is created a few seconds ago cool this is our second step we need to go to our third step third step is creating the container so first step was creating docker file second step was creating image so by image we have taken the snapshot third step is creating the container we can say that create container is the instance of the image we will instance in a port so how we do it this is a command to do it docker run this p flag is for publish flag in which port we want to see in browser colon 3000 4000 we write that command and the second one is 80 this 80 is the port we have exposed in docker this is the port inside docker this is a port in the web browser so when we write in web browser we'll write 3000 but inside docker it is pointed to 80 port okay then rm we need to write okay we need to write the name we can write any name we are assigning a name to a container feedback app and let us name it 17 again for this is the 17th version 
okay and then rm okay rm i'll tell you in a moment what this command flag does so the command is docker run minus p 3000 colon 80 what it does it will let us open the port in web browser in 3000 feedback app 17 this is the name of the image container we are about to create rm we will see in a minute but uh, image container is an instance of image so if we want to create the instance of image we need to specify the name which we need to create and in this previous step we have created one image it's feedback node 17 feedback node 17 okay yeah that's it for the command so what rm does it that uh, container is suppose we create a container we'll see container over here we are seeing inside docker so these are all inside the docker now an image will be created again we'll hit the same command again one image will be contain container will be created so what rm does is now it is for refactor once our container work is done and we uh, suppose kill the terminal that point of time this container will be removed again we can hit the command container will be created then again it will be removed cool and when the last thing we'll do is have i hit the command no and the last thing we'll do it open it in detach mode for that d so we have discussed this in previous video so by detach mode means when we hit the command uh, our terminal will be free we can write more command in the same browser by default it is in attach mode so node server will be running unable to find image Let me see once again. Let's try opening in first mode. Enable to find image F17. Yeah, but feedback mode 17. Full deny depository does not exist or may require docker login. Why does it require docker login? I'll pause for a minute. I will come to this in a second. And I did a blender. The blender was that I forgot to give a flag called name. So let's revise this again. Docker is the first command. Run p3080 is the command to run in the browse port d is for detach mode when we hit enter c we can write again but normally when we write in node this our server is occupied it is in ongoing that is prevented detach mode what i what we missed was that hyphen hyphen name we are about to give a name to our container but how will docker know that we are giving the name so um, what what i missed was the giving the name flag this was giving error now rest was same rm and the image we are pointing to and when we hit the enter we got one id okay come over here okay inside it so we see that our uh, this is created now and we can create as many container 
from this image. Let us go to our application. It was written, uh, I've re uh, revised it over here as well. So, so this, this, these are the three steps which we did. Now we should enter over here localhost and the port we have given 3000 and our application is dockerized all right so this is our basic form a node.js server till now what we did was uh, we have dockerized the app we didn't use npm install but we, what we are about to see now is the other type of data which this site provide so our logic is it's a simple code code wise uh, it is simple but when we develop in future requirements what we need to understand over here that our application might hold temporary data and permanent data creating the image image which we created that is a part of app data docker consider this as app data but our app also can do something like we've written awesome docker is awesome and we have written okay give it save and it is saved and how we have uh, written is whatever name we have written feedback slash the title awesome dot txt and we see that it is coming right so whatever we have written over here is the name of the file once we have written in that way and whatever we have written here comes over here but the key thing to understand over here is when we place it over here what happens let us let us go to our code server.js key thing is that first we store that file in a temporary file and uh, yeah we create this file and we also copy it in final path as well temporary file is temp final path is feedback these two which were empty now what it does it waits for the uh, operation a wait operation and once what 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 it does is that if a file name comes over here if it already exists in feedback it will say exist you need to fill the form again otherwise it will store it since we have entered this file for the first time it is stored let us create the second file and we'll be using the same name docker is awesome but this time if we'll enter same text we have written in the way that it will say that this title already exists exists already please fill it again so the key takeaway from this video is that uh, we in this application uh, this is a small this is a small thing to note but plays important role in an application now consider we are working in a big project and project has lots of modules in it and it's a heavily uh, user user form dependent website or some data is coming uh, we we use this in recently one of our application what we did was that we are importing an excel file using multer so what we did over there is that we need to place it in a temp file and after that we need to place it in file but the whole application uses temp data and now we will be dockerizing that app soon so we know that that file contains temp data lots of data so by temp means if the data that gets lost it's fine by feedback data or permanent data we mean that this data needs to be stored somewhere either in uh, database somewhere
okay so we dockerized our application successfully yeah one more thing I want to show you that is see we uh, we have seen over here that uh, file is getting generated we have seen it we are getting the file when we were hitting it first time we'll hit the second time also nothing this file will remain because the file was there but if you'll go to the application and open the feedback you will see that it is still empty temp file is also empty and the reason is this now docker uses the snapshot everything docker is saving is in the docker itself once the image is created the link between the application and image disconnects so if you want to uh, add more features write more code then after that we need to recreate the image but the same we can see inside docker if we go over here now let's close this let's go to inside docker file see this is our root we have set app in the docker uh, docker file feedback this time you will see this text is over here awesome.txt cool temp file has some temp data which is okay to be lost yeah that's all for this video team i hope you liked it if you do like it please like this video and do subscribe it thank you team thank you for having me here